Hey folks, Colin here, and today we're gonna to cover the best podcast equipment and setups, and that's going from beginners to experts alike. Let's dive into the gear. First, the microphone. So when you think about mics, you often think about this kind of shape, just like a musician's mic standing on stage, but they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. As you can see, the main thing to remember is that this is the first part in your recording chain. It's the tool used to hear your voice and then pass it on to wherever you're putting it next, whether that's a recorder, a piece of software, whatever that is. The first type, and the one we often recommend the most, is a USB microphone, a USB mic. That means it plugs right into your computer, no other interface is required. The main advantage here being that it's super simple. All you do is plug it in and it works. There's nothing else needed. And as I always say, when recording, the less things that can break, the better. The simpler the process, the better. So you get USB mics in all sorts of formats. You get ones that look like this, like the Samson Q2U that plugs right in. You get one called the Rode Podcaster, looks a bit like this one. This is the Procaster, the XLR version. Talk about that in a sec. Uh, or like the little Rode here as well. Rode NT USB Mini, closing the name, USB. Plugs right into your computer, lots of different kinds. You get condenser ones, dynamic ones, some of the more popular ones, like the Blue Yeti, eternally popular, is a condenser mic and therefore picks up a lot of the room noise. Whereas you get dynamic ones like the Rode Podcaster, the white version of this, that pick up less of the background noise. If you want more on dynamic versus condenser microphones, I've got a video for you on that in our YouTube channel. So you should see that linked up here. We'll put it in the description below as well. And equally, go and have a look at our USB mics roundup description. We'll show you the link there to see all of the USB mics that we recommend. The other version alongside USB is XLR. You maybe can't see it from here, but XLR is a little three pin big plug. It's a big cable, it looks a lot like that. That's an XLR cable. It's a big cable, fat end. And the advantage of them is that they use that standard that works with a lot more professional interfaces. So there's a lot more setup required. An XLR mic needs to plug into an interface of some sort, whether it's a Rodecaster like this one, whether it's a Scarlett 2i2, great little interface, something like that, or a digital recorder, which we'll go on to later in the video as well. But XLR essentially is a more pro setup potentially, doesn't necessarily mean it sounds any better than a good USB mic, but it gives you more flexibility. An XLR mic can plug into all sorts of different devices. You can have multiple people, all that kind of stuff. That's the main advantage really. And you do get devices and XLR mics that are higher quality, but cost a whole lot more as well. The really cool thing is that one of my favorite mics, the Samson Q2U or the ATR2100, are XLR and USB together. On the bottom of those mics, you'll see an XLR plug, but you'll also see USB, and therefore it works with both and can grow with you in case you want to have more flexible setups in future. The final option is that often you're actually carrying around a pretty decent mic with you anyway, your smartphone. So good smartphones have really good mics built in because that's their job, capture your voice and send it over the airways for a phone call. So if you have an iPhone, a good Samsung phone, a good Android phone, anything like that, the mic in there is actually pretty decent quality. And you can hold it up to your mouth, put on the digital recorder and record directly into that. The quality will never be as good as a dedicated mic like one of these guys, but if it's your starting point, if it gets you going without spending a thing, maybe that's the way to go. Now that we've got our mic chosen, we need something to record into. And there's a couple of choices here. We've got hardware devices or we've got our computer, different ways to do it inside a computer or another digital device like your smartphone or an iPad. We'll get into that too. But first, digital recorders, because there's a few advantages to using one of these guys. It does complicate the setup a little bit though. So let's talk through it. A digital recorder, this is a Zoom H5. You also get a Zoom H6. Plug a couple of XLR mics directly into this. So if you have an XLR mic you can work with, that'd be great. But equally, they come with a mic as well. This one doesn't have it plugged in right now, but you can get a mic that goes right in the top so you can use it 
as a portable mic, carry it around, if it's plugged into batteries, you can just record like that on the go. Equally, you can use this just on your table, put it down in front of everyone, mics are plugged in, and it can be a great studio setup to record more than one person. If it's just you, probably overkill. You probably just want a mic plugged directly into your computer. If you're mainly doing solo recording or calls, overkill for this. But if you're more than one person, two or more in person or at events, digital recorder can be great. And this actually works as a USB interface too. So something like this can work like an audio interface. You plug this in via USB into your computer. You plug the mic in here and that would let you use an XLR mic with your computer directly into recording space on there, like whether you're recording into a tool like Alitu, straight into the browser, whether you're recording into a DAW, like Audition or something like that, that can work that way too. The second option though, is recording into one of these guys. What a lot of people do, probably most podcasters are recording directly into their computer. And that means software. So the idea is that you plug in something USB, whether it is a digital recorder, audio device, a roadcaster, something like that, or whether it's a USB mic plugged right into the computer, it records into the software. So there's a few different options here. First, you've got podcast maker tools dedicated to podcast making, like our own Alitu. You can record directly into Alitu in the browser, whether it's a solo recording, a call recording with a USB mic. Then you get other apps that are meant for calls. So if you use something like Zoom or Google Meet or whatever, you can record using them. Zoom outputs recording files. It'll give you the audio from that call to use if you want to. Again, USB mic straight in, record via Zoom. Or you can record into a DAW, a digital audio workstation. That's a bit of software dedicated to audio engineering. More often than not, overkill for what a podcaster needs, but many people use tools like Audition, which is a, an Adobe tool, paid tool, but very powerful. Kind of overcomplicated for podcasting, but really good if you can learn it, steep learning curve. And then you've got something like Audacity, a free tool, which you can use for editing and recording. A little bit clunky, a little bit, again, overcomplicated for podcasting, but it's free and it offers all the tools you need. So you can record directly into that as well. There are tons of options here. I've mentioned some of the best there. We do have a roundup on the website on best call recorders. So there's quite a few call recorder web apps out there that you can record straight into to do interviews or co-hosting. Check out the link in the description below for a link to that article. Or check out our podcast software guide as well. That shows all the different types of software, including DAWs, including browser recording tools, including call recording tools. All of that is in that article as well. Again, link in the description below. And then the final recording device, something that a lot of you will have on you a lot of the time is a smartphone. These are actually, I mean, they have good mics built into them. As I've said, you can talk right into the end. If you talk like that, it's just like doing a phone call. You can actually capture your voice right into a dictaphone app or a recording app straight into the phone. It's actually pretty good quality or you get external mics for smartphones as well. And again, if you go and look at the links in the description in the recording section, you'll see links to our reviews of iPhone mics, Android mics that you can plug in. And I've mentioned the SmartLav Plus from Rode with the SC6 adapter. It's a lavalier mic, just like this one here, plugs right into your phone, and the SC6 lets you plug two in, so you can actually record two people in person just with a smartphone and that device. So the smartphone recording method might lack some of the flexibility. You maybe can't use the same call recording apps. You can't record directly into the tools you use like Alitu or otherwise, but it's something a lot of us have on us already, and it might be a great starting point for you. So check out the best recording apps link in the description below to see the ones that we recommend, and that could get you started. Another bit of gear that podcasters often get tempted into, especially a bit later on, is this guy. So a podcast mixer, well, an audio mixer, but for use in podcasting. This is the Rodecaster Pro. So it's built just for podcasting, although it can work for streaming, all sorts of other things as well. But you get lots of different audio interfaces and they really come into play when you're using an XLR mic and you want to use more than one of them. Really, that's the call for a mixer or an audio interface. If you want to use those pro-level mics, or you want to use more than one, particularly 
when you want to use more than one. If you have a setup where you have two, three, four people in a studio or at an event or something like that, that's when these guys come into their own because then suddenly you can use all of the, the you know, the mixing tools. Uh, you can do some live production. You can play sound effects using the sound pad over here, that kind of thing. You've got much more control over the volumes, the inputs, all that kind of stuff. That's really where a mixer or an audio interface comes into its own. So like I said, the Rodecaster Pro, definitely recommend that. Great little device, pretty expensive though. If you really just want something simpler, great quality, the Scarlett range are great. Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 has two inputs and they've got a 4i4, 8i8 I believe. You can go up in number depending on how many mics you want to plug in. That's a USB device, same with this, plugs right into your computer so you can record from these devices right into your computer. Now, if you're making this decision, bear in mind the humble digital recorder, because often these can take a couple of XLR mics, much smaller, often have very similar functionality. Like this is just the Zoom H5, it's not even the top of the range. The Zoom H6 is the next level up, but they have levels, so you can make sure you can control each level individually, each microphone individually, plug in a couple of mics. The H6 can take four XLR mics, a standard and you can expand that with units on the top as well and they've got loads of processing and things inside too so these guys are really actually they're just like little digital interfaces little audio interfaces or little mixers not quite the same functionality but the preamps in these sound amazing so it's really good quality and a lot of the functionality but way more flexible way smaller for lugging about if you want to take it to an event with that said, I know there's a lot of attraction for mixers. I mean, who can resist the knobs and buttons and all that stuff? So if you wanna check out our recommendations around some of the best mixers for podcasters, you can see a link to that in the description below around best mixers for podcasters. One sometimes forgotten part of the equipment setup is this, headphones. Now, you can use all sorts of different headphones. Some people will swear by a certain type of headphones or paying $200 or pounds for a set of headphones. Honestly, I've just used this set that came with our Samsung Q2U from Samsung, the Samsung HP20, probably not even in production these days. But suffice to say, I think if you just have a decent pair of over-ear headphones like these, right over your head like that, then that gives you plenty of quality. And this just plugs in with 3.5 mil jack like that. Now, why do you need headphones? You need headphones because it's really important to monitor your recording, to hear how you sound while you're recording. This is in person, certainly. Less important for online calls, perhaps, because it's quite tricky to monitor your online calls at the same time. But if you're in person, listening to it is really important because there, are, you know, if there's three or four people around a table, You'll hear chair squeaks and jingling of keys and all that kind of stuff. So certainly if you're in person with a few people, use a pair of headphones. But equally, if you're recording an online call, you need headphones so that you're not setting up echo, so that you're making sure the quality is as good as possible by not having your interviewee coming out the speakers and feeding back into the computer just helps you hear them better as well. I often see people do online calls without headphones, just using the speakers on their computer. Just get a pair of headphones, so much better, so much easier for you to understand it, to hear the quality, to make sure that you can fix any issues really quickly if they're coming up during the call. Now, even if that means not using a set like this, using a pair of AirPods or, you know, the, the standard like cable ones that came with your phone, something like that, anything like that is better than using your computer speakers. But you can probably get the impression, I'm not that fussed about what headphones you use as long as you're using them for whatever purpose we talked about, whether it's making sure you're hearing your online calls well or monitoring your in-person recordings. And you can find a list of our best headphones if you really do want to get a really good quality one or see decent quality low budget ones as well. Check out the link in the description below to see our best headphones for podcasters guide. Now the last thing worth considering is the room itself. So let me show you a few things you can do with the room to make sure it sounds as good as possible. So for a start, you want the room to be as soft as you can manage. That means no bathrooms. You're not recording in a tile encrusted bathroom so that the reverb is crazy because your voice is just bouncing off wall to wall and straight into the mic. Instead, you want carpet, so carpet on the floor, rugs, 
curtains, things like that. You want soft things like chairs or couches. And then you can start to enhance the room by doing things like this. So right on the wall here, we have sound tiles. These are just soft tiles which stop the reverb, they stop the noise bouncing around the room and sounding really echoey. And I'll show you a few places where we've done that here in the room. So here's a quick behind the scenes because this is the view actually I have when recording into the camera. Normally, the opposite way is that standard view that you often see on the YouTube channel. The light pointing into my face, but I have enclosed this entire corner with sound tiles. So you can see sound tiles up there, sound tiles here, sound tiles behind me. So you're trying to make a corner which is the least echoey possible. And I have quite a difficult time with this room because I'll show you. I'll show you the roof in just one sec. But this is a little bit echoey, but I've managed to damp it down a lot just by having these sign tiles dotted around the room. The quick view of the rest of the room if I zoom out a little bit there and then I start to scroll up. The sad thing about this room is it's absolutely massive and I can't do much about that. So that's why I've done so much work to try and make sure that sound tiles cover just about everything in here. And then I do have this corner, you'll have seen this on the channel as well. These are really good, these boards are really nice tools whereby you can hang uh, soft curtains on them. So I've got curtains on the ones here and at home in my home studio I also have uh, sound tiles, the kind of more spongy ones hung on these conference boards and they're just conference boards which you would see stuck up at an event where they put posters and things like that on them. So I hope that gives you an idea of what the room here is like, what you can do at home. Again, it's just thinking soft. Rugs, pillows, uh, chairs, sound tiles, all those things. Sometimes people just end up sitting on their bed and putting a duvet over their head and having the mic inside. That can make a big difference as well. So soft as you can, that's what makes a good room for recording. Now the final bit of gear we need isn't so much gear, it's software because this is all about production, editing and publishing. How do we get it out? So this is coming back to something similar to the recording tools. It'll be the same kind of recommendation because generally where you can record, you can also edit for the most part. So you have podcast specific tools like again, Alitu. If you go over to alitu.com, you can see that. You can record directly into the browser, does the cleanup, but then also has a podcast specific audio editor built right in. And it has a podcast specific episode builder so that you can put all the bits together. So you can edit in the editor, take out your mistakes, and then you can put together all your segments, the music, the music's added automatically, transitions to overlap the music and the voice, all those elements you can do right inside a tool like Alitu. But you can equally do that in a dedicated bit of audio engineering software. So a couple of the great options there are Audacity. Audacity is a free tool, been around for years. Great, it's free, it does everything you need it to do. It's a little bit clunky these days, can take a little bit of learning, a wee bit of a learning curve to learn how to do the audio cleanup, the noise reduction, the compression, things like that manually, how to bring in your music and overlap that with the voice, all that stuff, but it's all there, everything you need. Equally, Audition by Adobe is a similar tool. Audition is much slicker, a much more professional bit of software, but it does come with a lot more power. You'd think that's a pro, but it does mean it's even harder to learn. It's a complicated tool. Looks a bit like an airplane cockpit. It's what we use for some of our much more complicated productions, like an audio drama or anything like that. But for most people who need less than like 10 tracks to edit with, something simpler like Alitu or Audacity will do you much better. And you don't have to pay for Audacity as well. So those are the options for editing for sure. In there, just to mention, if you are working with music, a lot of people want to use that. You get a free music library inside Alitu, for example, and you can get other music libraries elsewhere to bring music into your production. You'll see a link in the description below for our best recommended music sources. And then once you've edited it, once you've crafted that episode into something beautiful, you want to get out into the world, that's when publishing happens. The other bit of equipment we need, again, a bit of software really, is a podcast hosting platform. Now podcast hosting, I won't go all into how it works just now, but this is where you publish that show to be live on an RSS feed. Again, don't need to know how that works, just happens. On the RSS feed, which you can then submit to all of the directories elsewhere. So some of the good podcast hosting platforms out there are Captivate, Castos, Transistor, 
Alitu. Alitu has hosting built in as well, free for the first thousand downloads. But if you want to go and see our hosting guide to really see the pros and cons between all of those platforms, you'll see a link in the description below, which will show you what they all do and what they're great at. So once it's live on that hosting, that's you public, that's you live to the world. And that's where you get to distribution. And those hosting platforms will all give you links and uh, guides to how to get yourself onto Apple Podcasts, onto Spotify, onto Google, Amazon, all the different places. But that'll come with your hosting platform. As a guide, they'll give you all the tools you need to get that done. Okay, let's sum this up like we're a coder. Let's do an if then, all right? If you're recording solo by yourself or online calls, then the Samsung Q2U is a great choice. USB mic and it'll grow with you as an XLR. If you're recording two people though, and you're on a budget and you're in person, the SmartLav Plus and the SC6 adapter are a great little tool to plug into your smartphone and record anywhere on the go. If you're recording two or more people and you've got a bit of a higher budget, then the PodTrack P4 and a couple of SM58s, Sure SM58s, are a great tool. You can take them anywhere and they sound great. And if you want to upgrade that USB mic, talked about the Samsung Q2U a minute ago, really recommend the Rode Podcaster as well. Great USB mic, really nice quality, goes really well with the boom arm from Rode as well and the shock mount that goes with that arm. I'll come back to it though, the Samsung Q2U, a great little mic, USB mic to start out with, plug it straight into your computer and go, or it's XLR2, so you can expand as you go. You can plug it into the Rodecaster, plug it into an interface of any sort. It's a lovely mic, great quality, and really expandable. And remember, of course, if you want to record directly into an app with that Q2U, Alitu does call recording, does solo recording into your browser as well, and then enables you to edit it straight away. It does all the cleanup too for you. So you can take that voice through that wonderful mic, that wonderful interface, and have it cleaned up, noise reduction, all that stuff, straight into the editor, and make your podcast in the easiest possible way. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've got a better idea of what equipment you might need to run your podcast. You don't have to waste your money buying that rubbish that you then have to replace. We've given you a full rundown. As always, you'll get links to everything I've mentioned in the description right below. So check it out there and check out our other videos. Hit that wee alarm button so that it shows you when we release new videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.